Watches all of that one. And you know what time it is now. What's on tap? What's on tap is brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Let's take a look at who is trending up heading into the regular season. As you see Barry's list here, including Damian Pierce, Darren Waller, Calvin Ridley, Sam Howell, Jalen Warren, Jahan Dotson, Tank Bigsby, Sky Moore, Luke Musgrave, who we talked about earlier, and Jake Ferguson there, Barry. Yeah, look, Jake has been, you know, gotten really kind of tight in one usage uh, for Dallas in the preseason. There was concern, is it going to be a split between, you know, him and Schoonmaker? And the fact of the matter is, it's clearly, this is Jake Ferguson's role. He's going to be the starting tight end for the Cowboys. Dalton Schultz, now a member of the Texans. And speaking of Dalton Schultz, top five among tight ends in receptions and touchdowns over the past two seasons. Now, they have a lot of mouths to feed. They've got Michael Gallup. They've got Brandon Cooks. Obviously, they've got eights. My guy eights there. Um, not to mention Tony Pollard and Mike McCarthy said he wants to run. But I just think it's worth noting that the last couple of years, the Dallas tight end has been a big outlet for Dak Prescott and for this Cowboys offense. Jake Ferguson is going to be that guy. And so he's kind of a guy that has seen his value rise in the preseason. Jay, what about you? Who's somebody that, you know, is kind of trending upwards after the summer? Well, firstly, Connor, I love this setup with the bar uh, with Feeling our friends at Bud Light. Yeah, you kind of got to pour, pour a couple of pints for the crew. Yeah, you got to. when you come back, you'll love it. Yep, you got a bit Dude, of a Tom Cruise, a Tom Cruise in cocktail type of vibe. So I would be Brian Brown in that situation. Though it didn't end great for Brian Brown in that movie. Uh, not to spoil cocktail, which came out in <laughs> 1988. Some curious listeners right now. From Brian Brown to Cam Akers. Cam Akers is, uh, is my guy here who's a bit of a riser in preseason. I'm not sure there's been that much that's actually happened outside of now the Cooper Cup injury, Connor, which has created more uh, usage for Cam Akers going forward, I think. But it kind of in Rashad Penny 2021 fashion, I think it went a little bit under the radar. The fact that Cam Akers, he was white, uh, running back for the last six weeks of the season. And the last six weeks of last season, Connor, he still had the same bad offensive line. He didn't have Cooper Cup there to take away attention. So I think Cam Akers, who is, you know, an unsexy name in a way because of that offense, he's a guy who showed that he could produce in a pretty adverse situation last year. So I think that he's someone who's going to continue to rise up draft boards uh, as we head into the season. Barry, looking at the volume, purely volume, that Cam Akers should get in theory, are you buying in on that one as well? 100% 100% Cam Akers made by Loveless. He's one of those guys that I've been talking about all preseason about like there is there are these guys going in the middle rounds of drafts that are cheap volume because of where they're going, right? Damien Pierce to me is the is the poster child for it. We talked about Pierce, but Cam Akers, James Conner, Isaiah Pacheco, I think uh, David Montgomery, James Cook, all these guys are going to touch the ball 15 to 20 times a game. Brian Robinson is in that list as well. And so they're just some really nice, cheap volume going late in drafts. Cam Akers, who over the final six games was a top five fantasy running back last year, is certainly somebody who I think people are starting to warm up to. And he's seen his value rise throughout the preseason, especially if Cooper Cup's going to miss time. Like he may be all they have. The entire offense may be Cam Akers. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, a lot of running backs there, Matthew. I think there are some wide receiver parallels there as well, where guys like Marquise Brown and Michael Pittman, who are going to be on, I think, suspect offenses, those guys are going late in drafts just because people have this kind of physical aversion to the Arizona Cardinals offense and the uncertainty around the Colts. But those guys are just going to get a ton of targets like they did last year. Uh, And I mean, you don't need to be on a great team and great offense to produce fantasy value. I think back to last year, Connor, Josh Jacobs won the rushing title on a pretty bad Vegas team. So you can definitely produce without being without scoring 35 points a game your team and winning games guys for me my preseason riser it's not really about what he did it's about what he didn't do and that's he didn't get hurt going into the season in Raheem to Raheem Moster right we saw we talked about this earlier in the week Jeff Wilson goes on the short-term IR Devon A. Chain it sounds like he'll be able to practice leading into week one but he's been dealing with a shoulder injury and he is a smaller running back so for Raheem Moster on a really good Miami offense, kind of be given given the keys to just go. And yes, he's a guy with injury history, but his ADP didn't make sense. He was being drafted after Jeff Wilson. Now this injury is going to flip that. But Raheem Mostert purely staying healthy to go into the start of the season makes him my riser. Yep, I think that makes a lot of sense. And again, 
people just don't want to get involved with that Miami backfield just because there are, you know, there are a lot of people there. There's Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson when he comes back uh, from his injury, and Devin A. Chain, who is everyone's favorite kind of pick there. But I don't know. I think Devin A. Chain is in a different tier to this, but kind of reminds me a little bit of the Isaiah Spiller buzz from last season, which just never materialized. And that is the thing often with rookies is that sometimes it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen for guys. They don't get the run that you'd hope they do. And I think Raheem Mostert is the safest guy to get work in that backfield at the moment. Barry, I think He's you took Mostert in our draft yesterday. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Connor? I think you took Mostert in our draft yesterday. No, that's correct. I did. I did. That's right. Friend of the show, Raheem Mostert. Raheem must start. Again, he's always been productive when he's been out there. Now he's got a chance to, wait for it, run away with the Miami Dolphins starting running back job. He's going to have that opportunity. Health is always going to be a concern with him. But as the lead running back on a one of the best offenses in football, most are to somebody who's going way too late in drafts. And by the way, even if he misses some time, even if at some point, you know, hopefully the guy stays healthy all year long, but even if he does miss some time, you know, you'll getting the, uh, you know, getting whatever, half a season out of him as the lead running back of the Dolphins, I'm in, I'm in. And I, I can't believe you guys let me get him. I don't know where I got him, like probably the 10th round, 11th round, something insanely late. All of you guys just silly, silly. Well, firstly, uh, I love that Matthew persists with the Raheem must start uh, nickname, even though Raheem most that literally came on the show and we posed to him which nickname he prefers between Matthew's Raheem uh, must start and my Raheem the dream. And he emphatically said Raheem the dream, Connor. Uh, so mm. maybe we should go with that one. But the other thing with, with Raheem most that He's averaged 5.4 yards per carry in his entire career, which is just completely insane. That was basically what Jonathan Taylor averaged in 2021, one of the greatest running back seasons of all time. Now, it helps that he's been in Kyle Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan disciple offenses, but he's in one of them right now with Mike McDaniel. I think that that team, there's just going to be a lot of, to use basketball time, there's going to be a lot of space on the floor for him to get to the rim with that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle passing game, just meaning that he can't stack the box. And so I think that he is just going to be a guy who continues to produce. Barry, I want to tap into your list one more time. You like that, Jay? Terrible, uh, terrible. And talk about that. Jahan Dotson, because listen, I know this isn't the news you want to think about, but if Terry McLaurin, if this lingers, right, foot injuries can be a little scary and it does impact him week one or maybe beyond that. How much does that change the entire perception and usage of a guy like Jahan Dotson who can win down the field and now has a quarterback that can throw down the field? Last five games of last year, he had a 24% target share. First four games of last year, he scored four touchdowns. We've talked about this. Kid had 20 touchdowns in two seasons, his last two seasons at Penn State. Scoring touchdowns is a skill, right? Getting open is a skill. And I think when we saw Terry McLaurin go down in that preseason game, I think, what was it, you know, five straight targets or something like that for Dotson or four of the next five passes went to Dotson. Like, so uh, the talent's off the chart. He's somebody that has first round draft capital. He produced last year when he's out there in the field. And there's a chance, again, you know, I'm praying that everything's okay, but turf toe can be tricky with wide receivers. And either way, even if McLaurin's out there, I think people are too low on Jahan Dotson. He's my wide receiver, 36. The talent's off the chart, and clearly there's already a connection between him and Sam Howell. All right, we're going to take our last break. When we're back, it's time for last call here at the Happy Hour Bar. We're looking at the best fantasy team names. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.